What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to clone your hard drive. Cloning your hard drive will allow you to move your existing data from the original 512GB drive to a new 1TB or 2TB drive. So I'm Sol and let's do tech. Alright guys, before we get started, just a quick warning. We're going to be messing around with data, we're going to be messing around with partition tables. If you have anything important on your drive, please make sure to back it up. I can't stress that enough. Hopefully you won't lose anything, but there's always that risk and I wanna make sure you're protected. So please back up your data. All right, let's get started. All right, so as you can see on my computer here, I've installed a few games and I filled up my C drive. Um, I currently have about, I believe 23 gigabytes of free space and that's not gonna work. I need additional space. And the problem is that it came with a 512 gigabyte drive as you can see here and what I want to do is I want to move over to a brand new two terabyte drive but I don't want to have to install everything all over I just want to be able to move all my data over my operating system and just get going and to do this we'll need this uh, USB drive uh, this one is a 35 gig but you just need about a 5 gigabyte drive to do everything I'm about to show you so we are looking at my computer and my C drive has about 23 gigabytes of free space all right, so we're gonna start the process. And first thing we need to do is head over with our browser uh, and search for Clonezilla. All right, now we can hit the downloads link and that's gonna take us over to the download page. Over here, we'll pick the stable version and make sure our architecture is AMD64 and switch our file type from zip to ISO. and we'll hit download to start the download process. So while this is downloading, let me take a minute and kind of explain about why to use Clonezilla as opposed to using a proprietary tool that comes with your hard drive. Samsung, for instance, will include a utility that runs on Windows that will let you clone from the existing hard drive to their Samsung hard drives. Um, and that utility is great if you have a Samsung drive. With this particular tool that we're using here, it's independent of both the hard drive manufacturer that you're trying to clone to, as well as the operating system that you're currently running. So for example, if you're running Linux and you wanted to clone your drive, well, you can do this with this tool. And now that our download is complete, uh, we have to go and download one more tool. So head over to uh, Google and let's look for Rufus. So Rufus is a utility that will create bootable USB disks from an ISO image. So we'll go ahead and download this utility because we're going to use it with our Clonezilla ISO that we just downloaded. All right, now we're back on the desktop and we'll go ahead and launch Windows Explorer and head over to the downloads folder to confirm that we have both files. And at this point, we can insert uh, our USB disk into an available USB slot on the computer. It's always nice to validate that there's no data on the USB disk because all data will be deleted once we'll use Rufus. So let's go ahead and launch Rufus now. And we have the USB disk up on top and uh, we'll make sure that we're on disk or ISO image. We'll hit select and choose the Clonezilla and hit open. At this point, everything is ready to go. All we have to do is just hit the start button. And once we hit start, we'll get a couple of dialog boxes. I usually go with the default, just hit OK and yes, and move forward. You'll get a prompt saying, hey, uh, we're about to delete everything. Is this OK? Go ahead and say OK. And Rufus will start writing the ISO onto the USB disk. Now, Rufus could take over a minute to complete, but when it's done, you will have a bootable USB drive ready to go. So at this point, we're just gonna go ahead and shut down our computer. With the system power down, we'll go ahead and remove the USB drive. And now it's time to physically open the laptop so we can insert the empty drive that we wanna to clone to. I'm not gonna bore you with the whole uh, process of opening the case. Uh, so with the magic of editing, I'm gonna move forward into an open computer. So with our laptop case open, we can direct our attention to the primary existing drive, which is right over here in slot one. And here is slot two, which is available and open. We do have to remove this one screw over here. So we'll take care of that. Here we go. And 
and uh, now we'll put in our empty two terabyte brand new drive into slot two. So here we go. We'll just push it in and we'll secure it with the screw. And now with the new hard drive secured in place, uh, we'll go ahead and close the case. I am not going to screw it back up because I am going to be opening it up in just a little bit to swap the drives once I'm done cloning. So now we'll go ahead and insert the USB drive that we made and we'll plug the machine to power and we'll hit the escape key and hold it down while we tap the power button. Continue holding the escape key till you pass the logo and then you'll get the boot menu. Select the USB drive and we hit enter and then we'll see the Clonezilla boot screen. And at this point we can just go ahead and hit enter to start Clonezilla. And we are first prompted to select the language we want to work in. So I'll pick English. And then we have an opportunity to change our keyboard layout. I'm going to stick with the US keyboard. And now we have the option to go ahead and either enter a shell command or start Clonezilla. So I'm going to go ahead and pick start Clonezilla. At this point, we are prompted with a menu that will let us uh, decide how we're going to use Clonezilla. So the option that we're looking for is the device to device, um, which is the second option there in the menu. And for the mode, we can just go ahead and pick beginner. And on this menu, we'll pick disk to local disk, which is the cloning method we want to use. And next we pick our source drive. So pay very good attention to which one you're picking here. And obviously we have to pick the 512 gigabyte, the smaller drive. So we'll go ahead and pick that. And on next menu, we'll pick our target drive. This is where the data is going to move to. And here we're given an option to run a check and repair on the source file system. This is something we can skip. We don't really need to do that right now. So I'll go ahead and click skip. And on this option, we'll go ahead and use the partition table from the source disk. Later, we'll use another third party tool to manipulate the partition table to fit our needs. But for now, we'll just go ahead and use the partition table from the source. On this menu, we'll just go ahead and pick the default. This will give us the opportunity to either reboot or shut down on our own once everything has completed. So now the cloning process will begin. Uh, pay attention to the bottom left side of your screen as there will be additional confirmations that you need to enter yes for to continue with the cloning process. At this point, the process is pretty much automated. Uh, you may get additional prompts. If you do, just make sure to pay close attention to what the prompts say and follow accordingly. Now, this process will take some time, so go get yourself a cup of coffee. And again, this is why I recommend to make sure the machine is plugged in while you're doing this. And when the cloning completes, uh, you'll get this menu where we can go ahead and power off our machine. Once the machine is powered down, we can go ahead and remove our USB stick. And we also have to unplug our machine from power. And now we're going to flip our machine over so we can get inside. And we'll pop the cover back off. And now that we're back inside, we want to go ahead and remove the original 512 gigabyte drive from the slot number one and then take our new drive, the two terabyte from slot number two and place it into slot number one, keeping slot number two vacant. And once the new drive is installed in slot number one, we can go ahead and close our computer case and square it back up as we will not need to get back into it. And now the moment of truth, uh, we hit our power button and uh, if everything worked out as it should, Windows will boot up. All right, so now we're back on the desktop. Uh, let's go ahead and open up Windows Explorer and let's take a look at this PC. And wait a second, where is all of our disk space? We still don't have any disk space. So let's open up the disk manager and take a quick look. And here's the issue. So the disk space that we've added um, is apparently at the end of the partition table. And our C drive, uh, we can't extend it because the free space is at the end 
and it has to be adjacent to the C drive. So now we need to uh, move that free space over to be adjacent to the C drive and we'll use another tool for that. So open up your Google and let's look for a G parted. Okay, so this part is a bit of a deja vu. Uh, we're basically doing the same thing that we did for Clonezilla with G parted. We'll download the G parted ISO and then we'll use Rufus to create a USB bootable drive from the ISO. We can use the exact same USB stick that we use for Clonezilla since we don't need Clonezilla anymore. So we'll go ahead and plug in the USB key again. And now we'll kick off Rufus uh, picking the G parted ISO uh, the same way we did before and create a bootable USB stick. Once the bootable USB creation is complete, we can go ahead and uh, power down our machine. And now we'll go ahead and power our machine back on, holding the escape key to get the boot menu. And then we'll choose our USB from the boot menu so we can boot into it. And once we see the G parted welcome screen, we can just go ahead and hit enter on the keyboard. Here we get to select our key map, but typically it picks it up automatically, so we can just go ahead and hit enter here. And you may or may not get an option for the language. Um, I did, so I went ahead and picked my language from the list. And once the startup process completes, Gparted will open up, which is the main application. Here we have our free space. And here we have the three partitions that we need to move. And here's our main C partition, we can tell by the size. So to start the move process, uh, we're going to select the, the partition that we would like to move. We'll start with the one that's far to the right. We'll hit the move button and we're basically going to drag it. We're just going to click and drag it all the way to the right. And we're going to repeat that process for the additional partitions. Just click and drag. And for the last one, and now we have all the free space adjacent to the C partition, which is exactly what we're looking for. We'll hit the green check mark, which is going to save everything and hit apply. And then this process can take a little bit, but it's basically moving all that data and, and updating the partition table uh, to fit what we just asked it to do. Once the process is complete, we can go ahead and hit close and exit the G parted application. And back on the screen, there's an icon to hit exit. We'll just double click on that and it'll give us the option to shut down. With the machine powered off, we'll go ahead and remove the USB, and then we'll boot the machine back up into Windows. Now back in Windows, right click the Start menu and click on Disk Management, and then we can see that the free space is adjacent to the C drive. Now if for some reason you don't see this, you need to go ahead and click on Actions, and then click on Rescan Disks. And that will uh, make sure to reload the partition table and then you will see the free space adjacent to the C drive. Now we can right click the C drive, hit extend, hit next, next again, and finish. And now our C drive is using the full capacity of that two terabyte. Open up Windows Explorer, click on this PC, and here we go, here's all our space. All right, guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the video, please consider hitting the thumbs up. Also, if you received any value from this content, please consider subscribing as that helps me bring more content to you. At the time of making this video, the channel had over 100 subscribers, so thank you very much for all that subscribe. As always, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section. I always make an effort to answer all questions in a timely manner. Thanks again, guys. I'm Saul, and have a great rest of your day.